Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen. Episode number 175. We are going to need help from Twitter to ping and spam Scott Fu Music to come join us. And if not, and while not, we will have the great Andrea of Legacy Finance to come and talk on this space and see what she has to say because she probably has a lot to say and we're going to give her all that space to say it and uh we're gonna uh bring up some people to help ask questions along to feed that feed that finance now you have to understand her crypto very small very little but what she brings to the table is Decades of financial services. No, you're coming. You're on this. You're, I, I, I've been advertising about you all day. Oh, she's going to bed. Uh, the bell rings. Oh, man. All right. We died. We died with that one. Maybe on a weekend. Shout out to Lissa. Shout out to Phil. We do have the amazing Eskimo. Oh, you really played that game well, didn't you? I did. I tried. How are all of you tonight? Uh, we're going to actually try to be somewhat quiet tonight to uh, allow for sleeping roommate. How's everyone doing tonight? Dude, we are good. I see we have another proof of work guy in here. What is up, my dude? We do. We have we have two. We have a dude and a dudette. Proof of work I'm, for the win. I'm all proof of work all day, baby. <laughs> Liz, what proof of work do you like? So I am actually the chief marketing officer for Just NFTs, uh, and we are the number one NFT service provider and Web3 resource provider for Ravencoin. That is actually really interesting. I, I'm going to pick your brain <laughs> on some stuff, but please like, tell me more. Okay, so essentially, um, Just NFTs is we own several marketplaces um, so we own just what we call just NFTs OG, which is a um, peer to peer, um, like decentralized self custody um, marketplace. So like you hold the NFT in your wallet, you list it for sale, but it's still in your wallet. Once it's sold, then you can send it to the buyer. Um, so it's like peer to peer. Um, and then we have a centralized marketplace that is actually a competitor to OpenSea and functionality. Um, but I like to say that we have um, superior, very superior customer service. Um, and that one is Ravenist. Um, and we preach all day long. Once your NFT is sold, um, please get it off of our exchange. Like we do not want to hold on to it. It's yours. By all means, take it. Um, we also are, we just bought, um, what used to be called Raven Mint, which was a blind mint, um, software. And we're incorporating that into Ravenist. Um, we also own Eversea. If you've heard of Ever, it, it's a fork of Ravencoin, um, and supposed to do P2SH. Um, but I don't know what happened to it. The marketplace is still alive, but I don't know if the coin is. Um, and what was the coin again? Uh, ever, or it's it's EVR or Evermore, I think is what it's called. So it was. Can you a touch anything with Avian? Um, so we're actually the, so the Ravenous marketplace, we're building out a white label solution. So like right now we're working with Meowcoin, but we've heard of Avian, but we, they haven't reached out to us as far as like NFTs or anything like that. 
Dude, I've been looking at Meow Coin and I've just been like seeing it on Trade Ogre and I'm like, where the hell did this thing come from? <laughs> and I started seeing it pump a little bit and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, so they actually are trying to work with um, animal shelters to like sponsor um, pets and stuff like that, like in the shelter system, which I think is really cool. So, um, but yeah, we're working with Meow Coin right now. Um, but yeah, and we are, we're just looking to expand, um, obviously to at some point be a competitor to OpenSea. So we would like at some point to create a marketplace on ETH, um, and Solana, but we're- Why not Kadena? Fuck Ethereum. Fuck Solana. Uh, we're, we're looking at everything. Okay. Like everything. So, um, yeah, like. We've been around for over a year, um, but uh, we're just now looking at investors and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, like we've put almost every marketplace on Ravencoin out of business or we've bought them out. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually have a few NFTs on uh, the Ravenist. Um, <laughs> I bought a few and I still have some like coins on there and stuff. I'm looking at them right now. Yeah, so I, the, we own that. Um, if you aren't familiar with just NFTs, but um, yeah, and we're like working on um, pretty much bridging the gap between Web two and Web three, getting people over to proof of work coins. Uh, versus- Dude, every time I go to these events and I talk to people, I'm like, yeah, I'm a proof of work. They look at me like I'm just like from like planet like Zoltar or something like they just like, what? How dare you? Do that? you didn't touch Solana. And I'm just like, what the hell? Like you, there's Raven, there's Ergo. And they just look at you. Yeah. And so uh, Xander in the audience, that's actually my husband. And he is the CTO for renewal blocks which is creating a security on ravencoin for renewable bitcoin mining i would love to follow you xander but (laughs) i don't know what the hell just happened but it says my limit is reached oh yeah no twitter's broken today twitter is completely broken thanks elon it's fucking everybody i keep getting that i can't so i'm at 8k following and i'm following like 5,000 something and it's like you can't follow any more people everybody's getting that everybody's getting that and it keeps saying that my rate has exceeded so Elon has messed up Twitter it is broken right now (laughs) great Um, I have some questions for you because I I have been in the Raven coin community for quite some time now and I have some gripes to pick and I just want to hear from someone that's in the community what are more apps being built with Raven? Honestly, the development right now is so limited and like few and far between. I'll just put it like that because um, like a lot of the devs come and go, right? So it's like a community ran project. So there are projects that are coming up like renewal blocks is a brand new project um well not brand new it's been in the works for a while um but there's also like other projects like brick bc um and they've been trying to get p2sh implemented for a long time but it just never goes through Um, what is p2sh p2sh is paid to script hash um so I'm not too familiar with P2SH. Um, that would be Xander's cue. <laughs> um, but uh, Paco, put him on the mic, boy. I I, I sent Xander the invite. Um, <laughs> you, I've been having a horrible time with Twitter. I didn't even know if it was going to be able to start or if I was going to have to go download it on another phone because I've like uninstalled it like everywhere on all the other devices I had it on. It's been one of those days. And we have him up. Xander, it is good to see you, sir. He's putting his headphones in. 
Uh. All right, all yeah, right. Yeah, no. Um, good. And uh, as we take a quick second for the headphones to, to readjust and everything, and as we complain about Twitter, because I'm I can't even follow anyone. I, I unfollowed like 500 people today. So, so just so I could try to follow one person um, and it's saying I'm still like at ma- maximum capacity. So yeah, Elon fix this. But Xander, Xander Bill has very questions for you. Well, can you tell me about what you do? Oh yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so I'm a CTO of Renoblox. Uh, it's a Bitcoin mining company utilizing renewable energy, primarily solar. Um, right now we're um, planning on opening a Bitcoin farm slash solar farm in Costa Rica. And um, that's getting pretty close to full funding and, and implementing this probably second quarter of this year we'll get started and um, I'm also involved with a uh, mining it's called Xeno Mining it's a PFP slash mining project part of the dog face NFT brand and basically we that project is the space cat that you see here that's a Xeno um with that project, I'm the head of mining for them, for that project. So when we get our own uh, mining farm, which would be mining four different cryptos, which would be Bitcoin, uh, Litecoin, slash Dogecoin, Merge Mining. Um, the other one is also going to be Kadena. That's going to be one of our other ones as well. That's my boy right there. Those are the four cryptos that are going to be mined by by Xeno Mining, by the operation itself. So it will be Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and Kadena. So those will be the ones that we'll be mining. And basically, a percentage of, of that mining operation will go to fund veteran charities as well as funding to build our own um, retreat for veterans and first responders and supporters. So basically, it's going to have like a cigar lounge, um, a university, Dog Face University. It's going to have um, basically uh, on site mental health um, services. And it's, we're also going to have our own mining farm built on the property as well. And so all the jobs in in that um, retreat will be, you know, manned by veterans. Veterans will be working there. So we'll be providing jobs and also housing for veterans that are homeless. Man, that sounds really cool. I have some questions for you on the Kadena mining. Um, can you give any information on what units you're going to be uh, acquiring? Well, the plan is to get the KA3s. Um as expensive as they are, but you know, we'll try to get only a, uh, a portion of the farm is going to be Kadena mining. So I believe at this time it will be like uh 40, 40% Kadena, 40% Litecoin slash Doge, and then 20% Bitcoin. So a good chunk of our farm will be Kadena, but it would probably be the K threes that we, uh, we implement. Yeah, the KD3s are just killing it compared to the KD5s. I, I could sell you some KD5s if you want. <laughs> you have to send me uh, uh, send me a DM or something. We'll take a look at what you got and see. If no, I'm just out. joking. I spent way too much fucking money on those things, and they're all just <laughs> sitting right now. Oh, they're making oh. negative. I'm waiting for this thing to just come back. Well... You can always mine the coin and wait for the coin to go up, too. I am. I am. I'm just biting the electric costs right now. i I just been like, fuck. But, um, no, that's really good. I'm really excited to see other people really getting into the mining space. I really am. There's just not that many people that are really looking at it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, 
They're underestimating the proof of work coins, that's for sure. So let me just pick your brain. Why not anything like Chia and why no CPU or GPUs? Well, basically, um, the availability of the of the ASICs, and we're we're sticking to proof of work um, coins specifically. Um, we're we're not big on the hardware drive, you know, the HDD drive type mining. Um, even though Chia is promising, um, CPU mining that that involves you know a little more work and it's a little more finicky because you got to worry about the CPUs and the, and you got to worry about the motherboards and, and then GPU mining, you know, it has, that has its own thing. Personally, I have my own G I have my own GPU farm that I'm running right now. So I, I know what goes on with that and how much, you know, maintenance goes with it. But um, just for the ease of use, the, in managing the uh, the farm, that's why we stuck to the ASICs. There, I I've noticed in my farm that it was kind of the exact opposite. I've learned that the quote for me at least the easiest to maintain were the CPU miners and the uh, hard drives. Um, the GPUs always gave me the most freaking problems and especially when i was mining raven i i know this is out there um i always had problems mining raven it would always draw too much power it would always blow my psus um no matter what i did on the overclocks if it got too hot it would just shut down um my asics i've noticed the fans always fucking go out um i've had some board issues i've gotten those taken care of but mostly it's been the fans I don't know. Have you had the same problems or is it just me? Yes, he has had the same problems. We live in the Central Valley, California, and it gets a hundred and effing ten here. And he would have them in the house. I forced him to buy a shed and put everything outside. So it gets hot. Let me just tell you. Oh, I know. I, I know that heat firsthand. I have them in Houston, Texas. I know. So I, I, there, was a, there was a facility in Paris that they were doing a bunch of the, the hard work mining, but they were doing, um, they actually got a deal from the hospital in the building next door um, to provide the electricity for fans to draw the heat out so that it would then heat the hospital. That was sort of a cool thing. That is my two cents on that shit because I miss the days of CPU mining. Um, most recently, I just I spent like two days GPU mining. Um, actually, I wasn't mining. I, I was folding, folding proteins. So that's what I did for a day. Uh, you can still CPU mine. You know that, right? I do. I actually have a phone that I had set aside for mining some dumb thing too that I think is worth nothing now. Did you start mining Pi? We're not going to talk about that. No, I Dog. did not. <laughs> Dog. I've been, I, oh, dude, I never thought this shit was ever going to take off. And I saw it fucking hit Hubi, Hubi. I don't even know how to say this exchange. Well, and I saw it hit th- yeah, and I, I saw it hit 300 bucks. I was like, fuck, I wish I could send it. I wish I could have sold it. Yep, 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 yep. I, oh, man, we have, whew. it was one of those things. Um, you know, I don't know. Hey, um, Xander, are you going to be doing any of the other uh, proof of work chains or any of the ones that, that uh, are split work, split uh, stake? Or just the four you mentioned? Well, I... Uh, well, for that project specifically, for the Xeno mining, yes, it'll just be those coins specifically. Personally, uh, I mine, I spec mine a lot. So, you know, Meow Coin, Ever, uh, Clor AI, which is one of the brand new uh, GPU mineable coins, Titan Coin. Yeah. Riddle, Pigeon, uh, 
Raven coin. I mean, I have CPU mine Avian and GPU mine dual mine uh, Avian. I have a huge bag of that. What do you um, think about Avian? I think it'll work out, man. I think it's a good project, and and it's just got to get more more development into it. The devs aren't scammers. That's what I've learned. Yes, they're not. And, and that's why I'm saying, like, it just needs to go move to the next phase with assets and stuff like that. I agree. Um, do you uh, touch uh, Nexo at all? Have you heard of them? Nexa? I've heard of Nexa. I, I know a couple people that mine Nexa. They do mine Nexa, but that's about all I know about Nexa. I haven't actually mind it myself personally they are very unique um it's a very forgiving um gp uh, like a mine on the gpu it's not really power hungry like raven i would say it's very similar to mining ergo um they're kind of unique i i haven't seen anything really like them to be honest um they they deal with a lot of like servers and video games and like play to earn shit, but it's like a different concept. It was fairly unique. I, I like what they did. Um, I have to say it's very easy on the machines and it's and it's fairly profitable. It, it overclocks really well. Awesome. I have to look into it. I remember when we had to do all of that stuff manually and just go into BIOS, and now they make it just like. Yeah, we'll flash that. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on not just uh, mining, but almost like um, helium hotspot tech, tech being used? Literally to garbage. Literally garbage. Literal garbage. Actual not fucking helium. dumpster. I'm talking about the tech and the idea of distributed nodes like that. Doug, they they literally had the open source for Raspberry Pi. Okay, if they really wanted this fucking network to go up, okay, if they really wanted this network to be the next best fucking thing, they would have left it open source and they would have allowed people to build their own unit, like their own hotspots, and they would have been able to do it with Raspberry Pis, and they would have been able to do it for probably about 150 bucks a fucking tip to toe on Raspberry Pi all set up and they would have been able to have the entire market space because that is a unit. The Raspberry Pis are so common. They're so cheap and affordable. Pretty much any third world country, sorry, developing nation is able to afford that. You would be able to get so much more infrastructure with it. But besides that, they said, you know what, we're going to take the centralized protocol and you can only purchase my mining equipment and utilize my services. It was absolutely terrible for when I set it up. I bought a few of them when it like first started really getting hot and it made absolute no money. I, I just pretty much threw the machines away. Um, I did not like any of the technology that they provided. I did not see any use case for it. Majority of the network is sustained right now by fees from the miners on their mining pool fees. Uh, that's the other thing too. All their mining pools are centralized and you have ridiculous mining fees that you can't take out anywhere else. So it, the whole system that they have behind it is really just garbage. It had so much potential. It does. It did. It does. So this is this was my sort of take on that piece is if you're wanting to create a network that meets a minimum standard um, rather than hobbyists or even, you know, you know, you know, builders, you know, you have to start somewhere, I think, until you get a good enough good enough standard across the board but i've started to see it pop up in other cases like dimio is open sourced um uh and i think hide mapper released part of their stuff as open source but you have to use their camera no matter what but i'm talking about it as, as a node validator infrastructure layer you know distributed not just necessarily for proof we of coverage really use flux we don't need that like there, there's there's so many other Web3 node service things. Like, just, no, fuck that. Okay. Would you, if, if, if a I'm blockchain said, it. hey, <laughs> we'll, st we'll stake, your, stake your node so you don't have to do anything, you just have to plug it into your Wi-Fi and your electricity, would you do it? 
Um, I don't stake any of my coins after Ethereum 2.0. I have a very big philosophy on staking, and I feel that, and this is my own personal belief, but staking is a way to get users to completely eradicate the sell peg to keep prices high. It's pretty much a way to get the lower to smaller investors to lock their coins up while I sell and then, oh, sorry, bud, here you go. Like, I, I don't approve of anything on staking. This is just my two cents. I, I understand that the concepts there that you can also make yield off of the coins. But like the other thing too is crypto is such a volatile asset class that you don't have to just worry about like the technology itself, like surviving and fucking working. I mean, like just look at Luna. Just look at Celsius, look at BlockFi, look at all FTX, look at all these other coins that went fucking insolvent over the last six months. So when you stake your coins, you're giving up your digital property to someone else for them to make yield off of. Where is that yield coming from? That yield is coming from money market firms with people using high fucking leverage to be able to make that yield back. Um so you also have to worry about them losing the money. You also have to worry about the coin itself staying afloat. You then also have to worry about fucking bridge attacks. How many times have we seen on Ethereum hundreds of millions of dollars get lost in Ethereum because of bridge attacks? It happens so much. So you don't have to just worry about the price of the coin going up and down, but you have to worry about all those factors. For what, 7% yield? You can make that in a swing trade. You can. But for some people, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, there was a time when it was cheaper to buy Bitcoin than it was to mine it. But people still mined it um, for that proof of ownership piece. But with staking, I, it holds two aspects to it. One, security to the network. But also, I believe the other side of it where it can go wrong. And we were talking about this last night, um, that it almost centralizes control. So I, I see the good in it, but I also can see the bad in it because if, if enough... You know, if a bad actor wanted to, uh, you know, take control, they don't have to do a 5150. They could do it for probably for a quarter of the cost and just say, come stake with us and give out like 12% interest. Who holds and up Solana's network? What? Who holds up Solana's network? Where is the network stored with Solana? So, AWS. Yeah, but. And Jeff that's a Bezos centralized manage, unit. AW, AWS manages how many other central, decentralized networks? No, 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 no. Don't say the word decentralized when it's being held on one fucking system. It's being held claim, by AWS. Claim, 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 claim to be decentralized. They're not decentralized. And at the end of the day, the proof of stake compared to proof of work, and this is where the proof of stake guys get it wrong. Proof of work is the arbitrage between energy to the digital world. When you mine coins, you are trading energy for these digital commerce. There's actual goods in it. So, th so when I create a Raven coin, when I create an Ergo or a Kadena coin, whatever, I have transferred energy to this material when you have proof of stake you only have value in it so the number like there's no real liquidity there when you have the proof of stake coin and you stake it and that you get the new coins in and yes you might have two solana and it might be worth 600 bucks let's say the strike price 300 where did the $300 actually come from? There was, yes, you created it on a screen that's no different than fiat. Like, there's nothing backing the money with proof of stake. It's other liquidity. It's a derivative base. That's why proof of stake in my book is no good. Well, then, so then shouldn't Bitcoin only then have the value of the cost of the electricity put into it? Bitcoin is a speculative asset. It's similar to gold, but it's a digital variant. Um, I like Bitcoin, but I'm not the biggest proponent of Bitcoin. There's a lot of flaws with Bitcoin. Um, we can get into that after, but to your point, it's just a speculative asset. You don't have any real use case with Bitcoin. So true. And you could say that almost about any token, but it's intrinsic Wrong. value. Wrong. I, I can build DeFi. Here, hold on. Hold on one sec. Look, so you can so with other 
protocols. You can build a decentralized power grid, decentralized token communications company. You can you can build a decentralized compute, no identity solution. There's no programmable apps or DeFi, and you can't issue assets. So no NFTs with Bitcoin. But you can do that with Cardano, Raven, Ergo. You can do that with Kadena. You can do that with Handshake, Nervos. There's so many other proof of work protocols out there that you can build with and have real decentralized items with you can't do that with bitcoin you can't I, do that i would i would I, I would agree with you like if we're looking at it from a deep five perspective yes bitcoin in my idea uh, in my eyes bitcoin's purpose because you know people people hold it too much it no longer has the tradable value that it used to of trading satoshis um, but, I mean, you can't even send under five dollars worth of Bitcoin. I mean, like, really try, try. Send me right now a dollar worth of Bitcoin. I'll send it right back to you. Send me a dollar worth of Bitcoin. You can't because the fees are phone. so high on it. Oh yeah, definitely. I I I, I am not. Um, I am not. Uh, I agree with you on that. Bitcoin so I look at I look at Bitcoin as plat as platinum bars. You use the term gold. So my question then: Did your val- the, Did your opinion of ETH change when it Absolutely. moved from Absolutely. work to stake? Absolutely. Okay. I read what they did, and I saw that a lot of the stuff that they did was immutable, and they pretty much made it like a fucking fiat currency. Like it's j- it's literally just a fiat now, and I'm just like, this is not what I signed up for. This is not what Ethereum was. Yeah. So I, no, I it, am it, not it, a proof of stake guy, but it also used to only cost nine dollars and sixty cents to to uh start mining you know um well not to start well for pooling and stuff like that but that was neither here nor there um it's one of those things to where um having a DeFi ecosystem i don't think necessarily brings an intrinsic value um now you you talked about um a decentralized net cell phone network. Is that what you had said? Or telecommunications? Yeah, I Solana does that as well, but you can literally take that technology and implement it to pretty much any proof of work as well. It's not just solely based off of rust or solidity. Like you can use that in pretty, you can use that on Cardano. Like Cardano's trash. Don't get me wrong. Like, but you can use that on Cardano. Like you can, it's not just hell bent on one protocol. You can't build it on Bitcoin though. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Uh, I haven't deep dived into it, but now I guess there's Bitcoin NFTs as of like a few days ago. Yes. Let's use a highly centralized layer two protocol and somehow solve all of the issues that we just had. That's perfect. Yeah. I would literally rather just buy Raven NFTs. Like I, I, Raven is very unique because they did not do any ICO. Um, well, okay. Um, rumor on the street is that they did do a little pre-mine. Rumor on the street is that they also have ASIC protocols um, where they're able to mine the algorithm with ASICs. Rumor on the street. Um, but Ravencoin is a fairly good competitor and pretty much in a, de- a, a, a next evolution of Bitcoin. And I would also say Ergo is the next evolution. Ergo is like avalanche, but proof of work. And that's not a security. It's a commodity. And that's the other thing too. All of proof of work is a commodity. All of proof of stake is securities. Yeah. Like the biggest thing to me too is yes, we're putting our money and yes, we're buying these internet tokens and we're looking at, Hey, let's try to make money in Solana, AVAX and Aptos and all these other things. They're all securities, but everything that's proof of work is a commodity. So like at the end of the day, everything that's a, I mean, dude, look at Bitcoin cash. It's a commodity as well. Like they're using that now in the Bahamas. They're about to go through with it in uh, St. Kitts and Nevis. Like everything that is in the proof of stake system, I believe is just a VC trap and to get people away from the true commodities and the true digital gold of crypto. Yeah. So, well, what do you think about then about, um, instead of proof of work, but you know, things like Hyperledger or XLM that use almost like a Byzantian, um, 
uh, agreement. The message. Byzantine general's agreement. Now, it's I said that, yeah, their I own said, unique trust. Yeah, they're I've in their their own I've done trust. a lot of work with. They Byzantine. now Hyperledger is weird because they have the we will conquer business. We are the chain that we will be the permission chain for this. The issue that I have with HBAR is that they are a private blockchain and private block. Like this is the other thing that just gets me, man. There's a difference between private and public blockchains. And Wait, private, what did you say? Private, which chain? HBAR. They're private. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and man, like that kind of, I just feel that I am not in the in group. I don't have, there's no real control over the network. There's no decentralization in that form. There's no governance that like, there's no way for normies like me to be able to have any form of influence in the network. Like I can get with other avenues and it really just comes down to who has the most money. So in, in, um, in the idea of the market, should should you or, or should any one person have influence on the market or should it be a mass mass amount of people? Or a mass one decision? CPU, one vote. Take the Nakamoto consensus. One CPU, one vote. Okay. Yeah. If you happen to have 5,000 CPUs, well, guess what? You have 5,000 votes. All right. But it should yeah. legitimately be one CPU, one vote. I mean, at the end of the day, like you're going to have influence of bigger parties with money. You can't stop that. But I mean, when you look at like things like Solana, I remember it was a few months ago. Solana was, there was a whale that was way over leveraged and he was like, it would, it would have wrecked like Solana a few months ago. Okay. And they liquidated him off chain. They made like a little DAO. They did it all in secret and they just all quickly voted to just like liquidate this whale OTC. And I just looked at it and I was like, how the fuck are you going to do that? Like, how are, how are you going to just like say to this person that you have to liquidate off exchange or else like that completely gets rid of the whole philosophy of crypto and what this means. Like I look at a lot of these proof of stake, chains as nothing more than just tricks and ploys to get people to really get into it and they have like a lot of permissions like in the code where they can just take out like they can just screw people over in a lot of these proof of stake chains you can't do that with proof of work yeah what about well even in the in uh in voting consensus models there's there's pieces that can do that I've, mm, I'm trying to think of some pieces off the top of my head while I'm trying to write an article at the same time. So I apologize if I seem distracted because I am and I apologize. More important. It's okay. No, I, it is not. It's just trying to make sure I reach deadlines by the end of the day. Um, so no, um, no, but that's I my two it, cents. I believe with you in that piece, but also on the statistical anomalies that, that proof of work can, can sometimes bring out. It's one of those things to where, uh, yeah, um, I believe one hundred percent that it is. It has staying power. It. I don't. But just like I believe, there's no one chain to rule them all. I. I believe that it's a conglomerate of different methods. You know, just like different government Absolutely. models work work, work well in different models. You know, absolutely. I, and I know I'd have to open my Raven wallet and leave it open for probably that's the one thing like I had about five, Raven. six days now, I think, for it to I, catch I just up. Leave it on, I leave it on Binance. I, it's not <laughs> even worth it. I'll leave my fucking Raven on the exchange. It's just not worth it to open that wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where that wallet is, which phone it's on. No, oh, that's the hilarious thing. But no, um, what are you saying, Xander? What about Ethereum Classic? I think that's underrated. Um, oh. My two cents on Ethereum Classic. So Grayscale is one of the largest mining uh, companies, like uh, DGB or whatever, D DCG or whatever. They have so much Ethereum Classic. They are able to pump 
and dump the price when they so choose. I do not see any innovation being done on Ethereum Classic. Uh, Ethereum Classic's claim to fame was, we believe that this is the way Vitalik wanted Ethereum to be, and we were mad at Vitalik, so we forked the code and we created this. They really didn't do anything innovative. They don't have a treasury. They don't have fundamentals really down. So for me to be a part of Ethereum Classic is just very hard for me, at least, just because they don't have a lot of fundamentals set. They don't have a treasury. And that's like one of the biggest things that I look at is, do they have a treasury? How are the devs being paid? Are the devs just fucking rugging you? Like, that's the thing. So... I would say if you're in Ethereum Classic, GG, um, do do your own shit. Like it is what it is. But like I personally would never buy it. I've had it. I've sold it. I've traded it. Absolutely. But I've never held it long term, and I've never believed in the project. So I kept my airdrop until recently. I sold my airdrop last year. Um, I you know. My, well, then, if, if, are you still doing anything, Phil, on uh, proof of work, Ethereum proof of work, and any of those DGen plays? So, ETHW, <laughs> I don't know how it has a $4 billion market cap right now. I have no idea how it has $4 million. Um, I wouldn't touch Ethereum with a 10 foot pole. And wow. I wouldn't touch variants of Ethereum with a 10 foot pole. Even the proof of work models. I said even Ethereum variants. Nothing. Okay. Nothing right. in that chain. Nothing Vitalik did. I don't like the code base. I don't like what they did for the proof of stake. And dude, there's no real innovation with it. Like there there's nothing going on. But do you want innovation with a base layer? They're not a good base layer. I mean, Ethereum sucks. Like, their gas fee, dude, it, it's fucking terrible. They have terrible gas fees. And Ethereum Classic never fixed that. Ethereum W never fixed that. So, so it's like, why even build on it? Like, you're getting the... the bunt parts of ethereum that everyone hated ethereum 2.0 was supposed to give people lesser gas fees and it and it didn't really <laughs> i mean it, it didn't it helped a little bit but like everything in ethereum i just don't like i just don't touch it i have i i, I still unfortunately have a fucking bag of it staked and it's been staked for almost two years now but <laughs> Dude, I just don't like anything with Ethereum. There's so many better protocols out there that do more. And the only real reason why Ethereum got like to where it is is because it was a fucking security and they did pre-mines and they did ICOs and they just were in VC's fucking playground. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. TJ, welcome to the stage. Thank you, sir. How are you? It is always a good day. How's uh, how's your morning going? Mate, uh, I'm in upside down land, so I'm just knocking off work, to be honest. So it's early afternoon here. Oh, uh, I, w I was thinking it was 11 or 12. Um, yeah, I know. You're backwards. Your toilet goes the other way. Um, but thoughts? Thoughts on proof of work versus proof of stake, proof of history, or anything else? A quorum. Oh, look, it's so tough, isn't it? Um, I do agree with, is it Phil? Um, look, I'm of the mindset, I'm a bit of a hedger, right? So I don't know what's going to win at the end of the day. So, yeah, I, I do put my eggs in both basket, baskets. Um, yeah, it, it's tough. I, I think when we talk about proof of stake and especially Ethereum, What's worrying me is the censorship of the blocks, right? To me, that's becoming a big problem. Um, so, you know, that puts me in the proof of work side a little bit more. You know, I don't necessarily like the whole idea of tokens being created out of thin air. I do believe people need to put some effort in initially, you know, to give it some sort of market price, if you like, you know, kind of the whole Bitcoin analogy. But... Yeah, look, I, I don't have a... To be fair, I'm on the fence with it all. Uh, I'm open-minded. 
Okay, so what about tokens that are on proof of stake? And Phil, this is a question, and Lissa and Xander, this is a question for all of you. What about tokens that are not pre-mined in any way, shape, or form? Not talking about which, doesn't matter what, what style of work chain they're on, um, but just tokens that have zero mine, pre-mined tokens that, you know, every token in existence is the same as, as whether it's today or tomorrow. See, I like to say that I am blockchain agnostic. So I love blockchain in general. Like, so I am all across every chain you can think of. And my goal is to learn literally about everything. And like, Taco, you know, I've been in your space almost every night for the last five days. And like I seriously I learned something new every time and so what did I do all day today I was looking up Zen that's what I was doing all day today I was just looking that up so for me it doesn't matter pre-mine ICO or anything like that I'm always just into learn because I like the technology as a whole um, but I like to say that I'm blockchain agnostic yes I love Ravencoin because like that's my job and that's that's what got me started into blockchain was that but I also learned that there are like I learned about the technology as obviously I grew up right so um, I started in 2020 now I'm here and I didn't expect to blow up like I did on Twitter so as I grew on Twitter with my following and getting this knowledge behind me. I learned that I just like every coin or every chain or whatever. So I like to say that I'm blockchain agnostic. I love saying I'm, I'm chain agnostic. Uh, TJ. I was going to say, I always like approaching it from an angle of saying, what, what don't we like about blockchain? You know, because, I mean, there's lots to love and there's lots to hate. Um, I think that's a really interesting question to pose to people. Um, you know, we mentioned gas fees. We think about S-loads. Um, you know, I'm an advocate of blockchains that run uh, first in, first out based transactions. You know, then we're looking at eliminating, you know, all the MEV problems that Ethereum has. Uh, so yeah, I, I kind of like posing that question to people. Okay. Uh, Phil, thoughts? Here, here's my thing. I like to put my money in commodities. There is definitely people that would say, hey, I like putting my money in securities. And you know what? It's totally up to the end user. It's whatever poison they like to pick. I... I had a very large holding, for me at least, in XRP, and I was a fucking idiot, and I left it on to Coinbase Exchange. And when the whole security thing happened with XRP, I pretty much have kissed that money goodbye. And from that point on, I, I took a hard look and I said, you know what? I really need to get out of a lot of these securities, and I need to focus on commodities, because at the end of the day, the Governments will, they're all unregistered securities, AVAX, Solana, he, like all of those kind of proof of aptos, like that kind of stuff. And for me to really be safe and secure and sleep well at night, I need to know my money is going to be safe. And that's why I choose commodities. There will be money to be made in securities. They, I'm not saying that, but right here, right now, a lot of these things are unregistered securities and there's no real framework. I mean, I had a good bag of library and library got fucking chalked up by the SEC. See, it's been five years with that case. Well, I mean, so one thing with library, though, it's now saying, though, that library sold on secondary markets is not uh, an exchange. I know. I've been library. following that. I know. I'm like, yes. Yeah. But, 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 but at the end of the day, you're, you're still in that area and you're still putting yourself in that position where it's like, do you really want to do this? I mean, crypto is so volatile in its whole nature. Why do you want to add another area of hey, we can actually lose our money here. And why not just go the safe route? And why not just say, you know what? I'm going to buy some commodities. And dude, I really like Litecoin. I think it's a great application. 
I really like Bitcoin. I like Handshake. I like Nervos. I like a lot of these other applications and no one gives them light. You don't, you don't see these things in the news like fucking Aptos, like Solana, like Avax. And dude, they do just as good, if not better. And they're true developers. You can see the GitHub. I mean, how many developers have been developing on Solana in the last six months? I saw like a month and a half ago when Solana was like, down bad no one was no one was developing the github was so, empty. I, I that that was fake news because i had got into an argument and i did comparisons of e compared to eth and solana where there was over three thousand queries um to eth but only a, uh about 500 commits and there was about three thousand uh commits to solana and only about 500 queries so they were looking at queries over commits and it was where it was completely turned around uh if you look at github and commits that is data i actually have and can talk on all right but well there are you, you got that happening. point so it's one of those things to where what more is being done on on eth it's a lot of it's being moved out to these layer twos um and but at the same time Solana is still at that, that branding ecosystem where everything uses the base layer and doesn't do a roll up because they don't have to. But let me ask you this. What on, on a proof of stake network, what is the real claim to fame? Is that they are able to do how many? What is the, okay, on a proof of stake network, which one is able to do the most TPS right here, right now? I can give you that answer. Yeah, go for it. Anyone. Oh, look, so we've got to we've got to see the data, right? So uh, between over on EOS, uh, I, I'd say I won't mention I won't show the blockchain, but there's two over there that have proven records of ten thousand TPS at five second block blocks maintained for three weeks straight. That's from my knowledge. Which is definitely faster than Solana, and I believe generally we all think Solana is the fastest. Taco, does that sound right to you? What chain were you comparing on TPS? Um, so, well, there's Telos is one, then you've got Tez Tezos, uh, you've got the new uh, EOS EVM that's been released. Uh, they're doing over 10,000 TPS with half second blocks. Yeah, no, I've seen that uh, with um, EVM OS. Um, and then I've also seen that being uh, proven out on a, a new chain that's still in Testnut um, called uh, Toposware. Uh, and that so. There's, there's large amounts of TPS being done on different blockchains, but what's... Yeah, but know. I got to beat. Kadena can do 480,000 TPS with a block time of 1.5 seconds. Oh, and by the way, that's not even using any other chains. It can infinitely scale. Using 20 braided chains, it's able to go 480. That's not even using a layer two protocol called Curo. That's not even utilizing 100 chains. Like you can get so much more out of so many other proof of work chains than you can these proof of stake. Like you guys are getting lied to. So, Bill, is that, do you have the Dom on uh, KDA? See, that's the thing. I see. Mate, I can barely hear you. Can you say that again? Sorry, is that better, mate? Yes, a little, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I might have to disconnect and come back. But no, I'd be curious if you've got that speed data. I'd be very interested to see it because um, I always struggle to find the data and actually see the proof. Not, not for Katie. Man, I'm trying to follow you, but. Elon broke Twitter. If you can, just type it in on Google. I'm sorry to do this to you. Just type it in on Google. You can see it right then there. Um, you can go to the Kadena um, Block Explorer as well, and you can see the braided chains and how many transactions that they're processing at this time and how much network it's using. So one of the I would have sent it to you, but it Twitter broke. Yeah. Um, so one of the things, though, with TPS, though, and this is where 
the question I, I ask is, do we necessarily need speeds uh, in the 500,000K range? Because what we're looking at, one, once we start getting to those higher numbers, like so Topos, where they're, uh, they're going to be able to be scalable, uh, theoretically, to around 5 million TPS. Um, the way uh, Ben Gorowitz is working to use a side chain on Cardano is not even really thinking about TPS anymore, but uh, just straight, you know, he's, he's using that for his AI tech for communication piece. So it's what you get within that transaction. And so we talk about block size and we talk about, you know, what can be, what's transmitted in that block size, but the blocks, all, all they are, are confirmations that it, and it signed, sealed and delivered. So if those blocks are coming into effect, you know, if block size is half a second and TPS is, you know, we're look, we then have to look at it, you know, in a smaller size. But TPS is where we look at. So we could then say instead two blocks per second rather than half a second block size. What what can fit inside that block? That's where the big question should be, though. Very good question. I don't know that technical. I I, I, I should. I don't know what the uh, block size is. I can find that out. Give me like a minute. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, we're so block size really re is relative to uh, how many transactions or the size of the transaction. Um, the actual. I didn't deep dive onto this. I just remembered that someone was, uh, a, there was a, there's a vanity company that will do uh, block ownership. So if you want to own a, a specific block for some reason uh, and like have like your a name or message on that block, you can. And they actually were the eight ones that able to uh, mine out and work on the last block uh, on ETH POW as well before, you know, when, when it got to that block height and it, and it forked over. Um, but it's what those transactions is really. So, you know, whether it's an application uh, data pull, so, you know, a file transfer of some kind, uh, you know, that's really where what we should look at is, yes, block size is important or speed of block, but what, what can constitutes a transaction, you know, and, Look at XLM. XLM used to have 140,000 TPS, I think. And when Nodal moved from XLM to their, they created that they had created their own parachain in Polkadot. XLM's uh, transaction uh, amount, not the scalability of the network, but the amount of transactions almost cut in half. And that's because all that Nodal was providing were data packets of locations of other Bluetooth devices. And so you can go, you know, I could go share my nodal uh, link and you guys could all become <coughs> <coughs> nodal miners just by your phone. And that's a, that's a polka dot parachain. So, and all that does is work to help locate other Bluetooth devices. Um, usually and Apple is one of the biggest payers of that data because they want, they just want the data for air tags. Um, so that's what really like, what is, what constitutes a transaction is one of the biggest, most important things in my opinion. What were you saying, Xander? I was going to say that uh, I'm learning a lot from this uh, from this space and from you, Taco and Phil. Just because I've been mining for a couple years, you know, you don't know everything about proof of work, proof of stake. So it's it's nice to uh, learn something new. Uh, um, may, yeah, I. I will be honest. I love love it when Phil comes on because uh, he he is a wealth of knowledge. Um, Thanks, and I'm not on drugs, <laughs> not anymore. Uh, what, flat February or something. 
Uh, but with uh, <laughs> just so just so people know, uh, as we were talking about EVMOS, um, uh, it is two point six three seconds for average block time. Um, that was, a, and it is a three point three eight TPS uh, with eighty four million transactions happening since it launched in March. So yeah, no, that that's there's so many different chains to be able to do different things. I think where we'll see a lot of um, advancement um, is with layer twos um, and or layer twos that then are able to become layer ones in their own right. And as we are seeing with what Polygon is trying to do, um, I think they're really setting forth, you know, a separation like separation of settlement and execution. Um, plasma chains and or child chains and plasma um, really really sort of holds a good piece on that I think so we'll get to see what that what that does um, but I don't know it's it's really interesting to see how much comes forth out of all of that and I'm just sitting here watching uh, the cosmos oh, um, version of EVMOS going on I'd like to also throw out there, if anyone is a watch person, I am selling an Omega Seamaster. I will take 100 AVAX or uh, 100 Solana. <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking for like 1600 bucks. It was like a five $6,000 watch. If anyone has here, a buyer, I will also give commission. Here we go with this. No longer shilling tokens, we're shilling watches. Now you sound almost like a Richard Hart. Don't even get me fucking started on Pulse. Oh my god, don't even get me started on Hex. Oh my god. Oh my god. We can talk all day Trigger. on it as long as it's fair talk. <sighs> okay. First know. off, you're taking your money. You're locking it up. Okay? You are losing the sell pressure, the sell peg to people. So you now have a way for your token to run and appreciate in value. Okay. So when the token appreciates a value, everyone thinks that, oh my God, it's great. I'm making more money. But you don't realize that that's unrealized gains. You only fucking profit when you sell and you have it. And when you stake your coins for 555 days and you get your great T shares, but dude, like you're also getting screwed over extremely bad because now there's going to be 554 days between that stake of people taking your money. Yeah. Like, like it's a great concept and it's like a CD, but there's so many better things to do. Like you don't, okay. CDs are for like security with large bags of money. Like if you have a large amount of cash and you want to like protect it, you're going to use a CD um, because it's fairly safe, but you don't need to do that with crypto because crypto is not a safe, unvolatile asset. It is the most volatile asset class we have. So the last thing you want to do is lock up the most volatile asset class for 5,555 5, days. Like, it, it just, no. I agree with you on that, but that's also people's choice because um, what that does. Oh, absolutely. That person, Sucker's born every day. Yeah, but is it a sucker? Can you say that that's a sucker if, if that's something that, hey. Yeah, 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 I can. Because where's the yield it, coming from? If it generates if it generates yield for them at, uh, on, on the end. Where does the yield know, come from? Users. Same way where you, transactions. So it's a Ponzi. Where, that's the same way that, that every network works, though. Proof of work extracts energy and transforms it into digital commodities. And those dead digital com commodities, you can then go stake for yield. You can't stake proof of work coins. Yeah, you can. What proof of work coins? Bitcoin. Okay. 
by taking Bitcoin and putting it on AVAX and wrapping it is not the same. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about just on uh, wrap Bitcoin. I'm talking. Uh, oh my gosh, I would want to say Bitcoin.com, but I think that's wrong. Bitcoin.com is Bitcoin Cash, and there's uh, definitely no, no staking with Bitcoin Cash. I give me a moment on this one because it was I was literally just where is it in the code North American. where Satoshi wrote for the yield? Can you tell me that? He didn't write it into the code. It's it's created into DeFi platforms that people create. You can't build DeFi on Bitcoin. Yeah, you can. If people want to trade, what if you have a protocol? If you have a marketplace, and you, as the marketplace have created smart contracts which take and release different tokens you know in different aspects so you can't build that on bitcoin is what i'm saying you on the actual code base of bitcoin you cannot build DeFi. you can't build nfts you can't have smart you can't have that on bitcoin you have to use another protocol and transfer that over to then get yield so my original point was you take your proof of work coin your asset and you are giving away your custody to someone else for them to make Correct. yield which is most likely a high-end derivative market which is a money market and someone is taking a gamble with your coins and giving you a small percentage of the yield which is extremely risky and not to mention the vault on where the coins are being held, which is also a spot for attack. So at the end of the day, you cannot get yield on proof of work. You have to take proof of work and move it somewhere else to get yield, which is more risky. I will agree with you on half of that. Um, so there's, there, are, there is a staking platform. I'm trying to remember its name off the top of my head. Um, that offers 4%. And what you're doing is you're, you're providing, you're staking Bitcoin per se in a semi-centralized decentralized exchange that allows you to earn interest based on the fees because all they're doing your is money transfer. No tokens in, in a DeFi protocol are. So it's you're not actually yours. You get an LP token just like anywhere else. So you're getting an inflationary asset a derivative of an inflationary asset. Give me just a moment. Let me find this real quick. Okay. When I take my Ethereum and I stake my Ethereum and I get uh, FTT token, the FTT token is an inflationary derivative off of the main token Ethereum. I'm using this as an example. Okay. That air token is worthless there's nothing backing it it's fake yield so where is the yield coming from they're giving you the spiel and they're giving you the big old fucking stroke saying yeah we're giving you money here but there's nothing backing it so they can take the number and number go up and everybody quote unquote make money but it's not really there yeah no, so what this protocol is, is basically for those that want to exchange other tokens uh, for Bitcoin or chain or switch Bitcoin for other tokens. And so they take a they take a fee and you earn four percent. That's all. That's all I remember off of that. Um, and most likely they are that. a money market. Yeah, that, that's all they are. And so you want to trade you want someone wants to go trade their Bitcoin for a different token. Well, you're providing that liquidity. Which is the whole thing of you are giving away your coins to someone else for them to hold. They are now responsible for your coins. And they're taking so, leveraged risks. But what, no, are they taking leveraged risks or are they providing straight Our, oracle prices? Doug, it's a money market. Okay. They're taking so, risk with your money. So if they're trading money for money and you're you're providing liquidity, same with any DeFi protocol, all you get in return is an LP token. You get yes, proof it's a scam. This is why proof of stake is a scam. So in, in what aspect would you say would 
you be able to then provide DeFi in a proof of work world? Because DeFi should be on a positive sum and it should be used off of actual commodities and things that have true value in the world. Things that you have transferred energy to commodity, energy to the digital spectrum, okay? The DeFi that you guys have today is not going to be the DeFi that's going to be here in 5, 10 years. The DeFi today is very degen. It's not anything like traditional markets. And it's a lot of over leverage. In traditional finance, okay, traditional finance, if I were to go to a brokerage firm right here, right now, I would, the most I can get leveraged up to, I believe, is a 5X. And that's being like really like trippy. You can't do 20x, 50x, 100x. Like there's a protocol called GMX. GMX is able to do what? 100x leverage? 200x yep. leverage? Like, hey, I do, I do 200x and I go to sleep. Yeah, and, and in traditional money market accounts, that's actually like illegal. You're not a lot, like Fidelity will never be able to do that. Um, E-Trade will never be allowed to give 200%, like 200x. Like it's just against, it's against the um, fiduciary responsibility. I forget what fucking code it is, but it's one you're, of the codes. fiduciary responsibility. Yeah, yeah. But you're yeah. not, the, the DeFi that is today it's not real and it really truly is a ploy. It's saying, give me your tokens and I will give you an air token. And I say the air token has value. So there it has value. And now you can play with it in the ecosystem and now you can build on it. The DeFi that will come about will be, I have a thousand coins. I'm putting it up for collateral. I am buying a house with my coins. I'm buying a car. I am using a, I am using it for a loan. It's always going to be a positive sum income with true DeFi. Like true DeFi, you'll never be able to get in debt. Like this is the difference with like our current financial system in crypto is our current financial system uses a negative sum error and our cryptocurrency uses a positive sum. Meaning if I were to go take a DeFi loan proper, I would take my KDA, put it up, and I would get up to 50% of my collateralization. And we also have a friend that's currently launching a protocol, shameless plug, Savvy DeFi. Um, Savvy DeFi. I was ta- just about to talk about this. Yeah, where you can take your coins, plug it in, and you are 100% covered because it's based off of the coins, not the US dollar valuation. So that is true DeFi. That is true real DeFi, not this shit where it's like give me your token i'm gonna give you air token and then you can take the yield and synthetic like that's not real that that is a scam and that is people getting too greedy and you know what there is money to be made ponzi's do have money i mean it's just you don't want to be the fucking last guy holding the bag on it i agree with you on that and you know it's one of those things where with savvy Savvy uses is using your collateral to uh, for yield. It's also permissionless. Yep. It's also not in their custody. I agree. It's all it's all smart contract based. Um, Correct. And so, but it is using it's it is using yield farming to pay off your collateral your your loan per se. So, uh, like I was I was talking about this. I talked about this with Roman. You know. Uh, you put up a million dollars, you get 500,000. And if that yield, you know, the yield strategy you're picking is paying at the minimum, you know, I know there's your larger yield strategies, but 10%, you know, and you take out half a million, you go buy a house, that that 500,000 is being paid off, you know, at 10% a year based off that million you put in. So you then literally pay that, pay that house off in five years. Yeah, but I want you to do me a favor. You go ask Roman and say, hey, dog, can you do a Kadena pool? Can you do an Ergo pool? Can you do a Raven pool? Can you do any proof of work pool? See what he says. Um, all right. I, I, I see him. I'm going to be seeing him soon. I will do that. Okay. Let me know what he says because I've already asked him this because I was going to – I was like, dude, I could put some Kadena with you. Like, let's go. And he's like, I, 
I, I'm not going to spoil it. You just tell me what he says. All right. I, I'm pretty sure I know what, what he's going to say. And then he's going to be like, who have you been talking to? So I, I don't want to, I don't want and anyone to be like, I don't want anyone else to feel like uh, out on this conversation, but or any thoughts or words in it. Xander, Lissa, TJ, I think TJ's rugging a little bit. Uh, Xander, Lissa, any, any thoughts or comments on all of this? Or TJ? I've literally learned so much in the last, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> what, D-Gen's ranting? <laughs> Definitely. I hope you guys make very smart financial decisions. I wish everyone the best of luck. We are all going to make it. And that is all. Uh. I, I agree with you. Uh, it's one of those things to where um, seeing different strategies play out and, you know, me and me and Roman talk about uh, DJ and box strategies and stuff like that. And like I go and I over collateralize and I loan out and I uh, then I over collateralize that loan and then I go over collateralize and then I loan and then I over collateralize, then I loan and I, I do DJ and plays like that. Um, and so I have fun with it. Um, and so it's really interesting to then see if the, the token then, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of, uh, depreciates in value uh, in, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I get all of, I can then unwrap all of that and hopefully, you know, and, you know, it will pay for itself and just, in just the, the, the turnaround of that. So it, it, there's some fun moves that you can do there uh, to unwrap that entire pyramid there. But um, one of the things that uh, I've talked with a lot uh, with Eskimo about is you need almost an entire uh, financial education to be able to understand this point of where we are. And I look at that in one aspect of uh, ease of use of living, you know, if the, the more technology advances, the easier it is to, it becomes to live. Um, you look at, at hardship living, you know, look at how, you know, what life looked like 200 years ago um, and what it took just to go to the market for some people, you know, it was, you know, you had to go get your horse ready. If you had one, you know, uh, make sure, you know, you ate for the day, you might be gone for the entire day or, or the next day. Um, and then, you know, that whole journey to the markets to, you know, and then the journey back versus now I got an app and I can have Red Bulls delivered to my door. So. I am so thankful that I live in America and I have just enough high quality life points. I have a C I have a refrigerator. I have fucking shoes. Like I am so thankful that I have these things and I am in this country. And I, I've always thought about that. Like if I was like 200 years ago, how fucked I'd be. Oh my God. I am so thankful to be alive in this generation. But you're also like where, see, this is where everyone that's here right now is basically and and this is, I am pulling this opinion out of thin air, um, out of my la latest fart. Um, so it could just be full of hot air. But in a way, we are digitally living 200 years ago. We are figuring this shit out as we go. Uh, you know, we, we break down, we learn, we get targeted, and we are still continuing on, and we're still here. So it's one of those things to where we are pioneers uh, everyone tries to uses the analogy of, of, you know, the wild west. I prefer deep space because no one's been here before. You know, this is new for everyone. Um, Oh, absolutely. I also want to throw in one thing to you. We are, we are at the generation right here, right now where we have gotten off of the standard of money from gold to money, from fiat to money and now we are in the transformation where we are transferring 
energy whether it is bitcoin or proof of stake at the end of the day you still need energy to run your servers for aws at the end of the day no matter what we have now transferred money and value through energy and it's really going the next 10 years i personally believe is going to be an energy race and i feel that the way how our economy is going to rejuvenate is through energy reproduction and it's really going to harness nuclear it's really going to harness a lot of renewables and more eco-friendly but right here right now we are in the generation right now that we have transferred out of the old monetary policy of gold and fiat to now energy circulation which to me is very big we're the very first ones to do it yeah um so just so uh i because i want to zip zip back to this real quick um for lending protocols that provide uh uh rewards for for bitcoin there's inlock zipmex cake defi nexo U holder swiss borg who i actually know ave but they are doing wrapped versions and then curve and they're doing wrapped on with Ren BTC. Um, Inlock's pr providing the most at 5.25%. And you can find all of this information at stakingrewards.com. Um, but yeah, they're providing uh, on average, an average of between all of those a 2.53% annualized return. So it's not much, but you're lending out your token. Um, either in a centralized or decentralized manner. And uh, I know Swiss Borg uh, really is pushing stuff forward on that as well. Can you do me a favor and explain to your mother that she is going to take her coins, put it into the internet box, and do exactly what you do, and she's going to make money on it. And you tell me what she says and how she looks at you. Um. I don't know where her grave is, so I apologize. I'm going to use my grandma. And okay, I apologize. Didn't mean that. That's all right. My grandma, for a long time, thought I worked for Bitcoin, and um, my cousin too. <laughs> she like I would like I'd go visit her. Uh, the last time I visited her, and she had a whole bunch of you know crypto clippings from the newspaper and stuff like that, and. She's like, oh, I, I saw, I thought of you every time I saw these. Ninety percent of them, ninety-nine percent of them were um, all like scam notifications in the newspaper or hacks and such. Um, but you know, she asked me why I made the price of Bitcoin go down, and I, I, my response was so that more people could buy it. But really, the only thing I can, uh, the way, the easiest way I explain it. Um, you know, is I take out all of the intricacies of blockchain because I've already explained those, you know, it's just basically she knows what a ledger is. She used to manage a lot of different books. So she, she's like, she understands a distributed ledger and the instantaneousness of verification. She doesn't need, she's like, do I need to understand cryptography? I was like, no, you don't, but there's a computer program that does. She's like, okay, cool. And, and just like you don't need to understand all of the inner workings of your phone. That's when we get to an infrastructure layer um, when it's intrinsic and, and not even intrinsic, but um, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm forgetting the word intuitive when it is intuitive. That's no, that, that is when we, we know we, we, we sort of make it. We know by looking at our phones right now that that microphone button on our bottom left, if we hit it, no one's going to ever hear us again. As long as there's a red strike mark through it, we know that we're muted. And there's no really big button that's words that say that that's what it does, but we know, we know that. Now, talking about value gaining yield, you know, she understands what a CD is. So if you, you know, or interest from her bank, she knows that a bank is using her money. You know, what, what she doesn't need to know is that, or what, what she does know, she's like, yeah, no, I know that if everyone ran to the bank to get their money, it wouldn't be there. She understands. Yeah, that's that. literally the proof of stake shit, dog. <laughs> well, proof of stake, you know, uh, on pre mine tokens, yes. On non pre mine tokens, no. Uh, it, it, and so, like, it's when, when, it, if you get to, to a point to where, um, 
you know, look at like what, like, what is it? I think balancer and my, they only create what they've taken custody of, you know, and, and balancer, you know, does rebasing, you know, uh, what are your thoughts on rebase tokens or what is anyone's thoughts on rebase tokens? Look, there's so many different ways to skin the cat in derivative-based markets. Um, they all have their own use case, and they all are a specialty asset. Um, I would say if you do not know your finances and you don't know the risk at hand, that you should not be in them. I personally know about these derivatives, and I personally stay the fuck away from them because I just don't feel safe putting my money in there. It's the same reason why I don't put my money in a money market with Bank of America. My mom, okay, so fun fact, my mom called, called me today and she goes, hey, my banker called me and she said that if I were to put money with her, that they were able to get me 10%. And I looked at her and I said, how the fuck are they doing that? And she goes, I don't know. And it's the same thing. It's like, dog, where is the yield coming from? It's, it's literally the same thing. When you put your money in the bank, we all know that the bank doesn't have the fucking money. Like I, I, I've owned businesses before and I've went to go pull out money and it's been large sums and they've never really had anything over $10,000 in the reserves. So like anything over that, you have to go out and order the money and it'll be there in like two, three days. They leave it in the fed yep. in like the local fed or the, like, or the local main branch. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But it's like the same thing. It's like, dude, why do you want to take that risk? And I get it. You can over collateralize, but man, there's, this is where you just have to say to yourself, do you want to play the safe and narrow and play the long game? Or do you want to take some risk and be creative? And it's really up to the end user. It's not my cup of tea by any means. No, sir. I, I, I don't do any of that staking shit. I don't do any of it. I don't do any of the like um what is what it, what is the frax liquid staking and stuff. I don't do any of that stuff. I take my coins, I put them in a hardware wallet and I fuck off. Yeah. Did you ever do staking? Like back in the I day? have okay. I have a fair amount of ETH and it's been locked up for two fucking years and I haven't touched it and it really burned me on it. Gotcha. You. you didn't you, was Lido around? It obviously wasn't around initially, right? Is that kind of the gotcha to it all? No, Coinbase was giving like seven or eight percent on it, and I was like, Yeah, I'll just stake this shit in there and I did it and I'm like, fuck. What did know, you, you just oh sorry, Taco, you go, mate. Oh, I was gonna say, did you did you pull out the ETH two token that you're able to then tr liquid trade? Yeah, I, I I got rid of all of it pretty much, um, and I've taken it and I've taken a fairly hefty loss on it because the one thing about that ETH two token that Coinbase does, they did it a hundred dollars spot value under. So I was like, you know what? I am just done with this. I I am gonna just take the fucking hit, and I just moved on. Uh, uh, TJ. Yeah, I mean, look, it's an interesting. I, I do. I mean, look, I do. I dabble in projects where, you know, tokens are created created out of thin air, not because I agree with it, but because I see that people. Uh, this is just my opinion, right? I don't. I honestly believe most of the people don't care, right? I, I'm baffled by it. I, I totally understand what you're saying, but I don't think people care anymore that. You know, this yield is, it's, 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 you know, it's just being paid by creation of new tokens to the users, to the holders. I, do you think they just don't know? Uh, I, I, like, do you think they're just like, ha, ha, gotcha? No, I honestly believe, like, look, to be fair, you know, I'm a part, I'm dabbling in the Richard Hart stuff. I have been for a while. Everyone there knows right i think it's the dumbest thing ever right i don't agree with it but you know i've obviously got a tiny little bit of my capitals there invested it's a gamble right that's not an investment it's a gamble um that whole community yeah they know they know that but they don't care and that's kind of where i tilt my head a little bit <laughs> because i can't understand that they just don't care right um it's just interesting mate um because for me it was a big red flag. I don't. I don't like. 
anything that's got a high inflation rate. I don't like anything that's got massive lockups, um, and especially when something is literally just printing more of itself to pay, you know, the stakers. I definitely don't agree with that. But, I mean, mate, they've, you know, it was, I don't know how many stakers they've got now. You know, over 130,000 when I last checked. <laughs> They don't care, you know, and the averages are over six years of lockups. They don't seem to care about that either. It's baffling. And the, the question is, with a lot of those people, did they take crypto, you know, the number one crypto mantra mantra to heart? Don't put in what you're willing, you know, willing to lose. And so they took what they're willing to lose. And, you know, they said that this might have the best long term play. I don't know, mate. I, 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 I kind of, yeah, I think a lot of people know. I, I think a lot of people went in far too deep. You know, many stories of people selling cars, many stories of, oh, you know, I'm investing in this for my kids. Um, you know, no, 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 no. You, especially when it comes to your kids, you shouldn't be putting, you know, that money that you've put aside for their future, you shouldn't be putting that in crypto, you know? Yeah. I, I would agree with you on that, you know, um, where I see a, a bit of, you know, where one of the things that I, I like with, with pre-mine tokens, uh, and, and I'm sure that this might strike it too, Phil, is where, where, where there's transparency in that process and that allocation is, is, is known that is where I think that there there's room to grow. And if, if, but it's a it's security not, and not necessarily. No, that meets the definition of a security. If there's a pre-mine. Uh, the I'm going one, to research if there's that. a pre-mine, it's a security. But do we care for securities? Like, I know we throw that around here a lot. You know, there's, I know it was different with library. I think it was, I don't know enough about that project. I want a deep dive, but EOS is another good example. They just got a slap on a wrist and a, what was it? $40 million fine. And they're still doing business. Um, Look, I, I, Oh, you're saying I'll let you speak. No, no, mate. I'd finished all yours. So there's not, I said before, there's nothing wrong with it being a security. Okay. There's money to be made in securities, but you have to let people know that you are a security versus a commodity. It's wrongful to tell someone you're a commodity when you're actually a security. That's fraud. And that, to me, is just where the line needs to be drawn. People just need to be told you're buying a security or you're buying a commodity. I have no problems with people buying a security. It's just the problem of securities trying to pass off their commodities. But are they not unclassified? I mean, we always hear, oh, you know, crypto A is not a security because of, you know, these 10 points, right? Or it doesn't meet the Howey test, for example. I even argue the fact that you shouldn't be saying it's not and you shouldn't be saying it isn't. It's just simply unclassified. The only people who can deem something as a security, as far as I'm concerned, you know, is organizations like over there in America, the SEC, right? So I don't know. I just kind of, I'd be more comfortable to just say to someone, hey, here's a crypto project. It's super interesting. And, you know, if you bring up the security conversation with me, I would say it's unclassified. You know, I'm not in And this is the reason. They have no framework for what the definition of a security... Right now, they're all unregistered. Now, the way how the law works is that you have to have a license to drive. You have to have a license to go fishing in America. You have to have a license to do anything through the government. And right now, you're selling unregistered securities. So you're kind of doing something... You're in the gray area. You're doing something bad, but the government's watching you. And the government's kind of letting you play and it kind of wants to see what you do before it yells at you. And there's no true framework for you to say, yes, this is where the security is and this is where it, but this is where the issue it arises because there's no framework. There's no framework to say, guys, this is what can, 
fits as a security. This is what is not a security. Yada, yada. There's no guideline. There's no framework. So that is why it's very important to be upfront with your clients and customers and say, we are a security because at any point framework can come out. And if you don't meet that framework, you're fucked. So Phil, is, is it the creators that are more fucked, if you like, than us as consumers? You know, I know he... No, it's the consumers. So here, for example, mate, we and I don't know how, you know, tax is done by most people there. Right now, whether a crypto is a security, a commodity, or whatever, we still pay the same tax. So for us, it's a nothing burger. Like, I don't, I don't care what's what. It's just literally nothing to me. I still will, you know, do my tax, do my capital gains, whatever, and so be it, right? So to me, in all honesty, I don't, I don't care. Until obviously, maybe I do if I, you know, rabbit hole things a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, to me, it doesn't bother me, mate. Not here. Let me ask you a question. Why are you paying tax on your crypto? Why are you not putting it in a non-KYC wallet, an offline ledger? <laughs> um, effort, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I've just never thought about it, right? I've, I kind of came in from equities, came into crypto. I record everything. I do my taxes. I go to my tax man and say, hey, I made this much this year, right? Um, and then I pay the bill. Do you do that for unrealized gains? No. Or unrealized losses? Yeah. No. And so, Phil, so this is a question where I knew that I, I was thinking this might come up because, and I don't mean to box you in, Phil, where one situation is like why you should care about one thing and not the other. While well, you're asking why is he paying interest on taxes, well, that's, that's sort of what the, the, the law, rule of the law is. You know, rule land of law. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm in that word jumble part of the night. Um, that's sort of the rule of thumb. But then at the same time, you're saying you're worried about being a security token and not being a secure uh, security token. And so I I know where you're coming from on that, Phil. But I, I also want to understand, you know, and I think you know this this is you know if if you're willing and wanting to do one. Because I've had this conversation too. If people believe in censorship, why are they giving their DeFi wallet addresses to the IRS? Uh, you know, f for them to get put on that wallet to get put on a list somewhere. It might not be seen for years, but eventually that's going to be uh, docu scanned, and that's going to be you know read by an AI, and an AI is going to follow that wallet and see every other wallet and think it's done. Um, and put that on the list somewhere. And so the question is, why should you care if it's a security or not, if you care, don't care about taxes being paid on it or not? So there's two folds to this question right here, right now. If you were to have a currency like, let's use Hex, for example. If I had majority of my worth in Hex, and let's say it was in an offline wallet, okay? And the government came in today, tomorrow, and said, Hex is now a security. It would be pretty much kicked off of any exchange, and it would be almost impossible to transact in that currency. People aren't going to take outlawed currencies. So if a currency gets banned, outlaws won't use banned currency okay like if they said we are done with hex no one is allowed to use it it's a security it's bad it's this no one's going to transact in that in that currency because it's been outlawed the difference between kyc and non-kyc and paying tax and not is the difference between letting the government play in the game and get some of your profits and not playing into it so like when you let okay when you let Uncle Sam or whatever government come in and take your property, how are they going to do that in a non-KYC wallet, or sorry, in an offline wallet? If you have any, this is the best way to protect yourself. Cryptocurrency is the best self-custody way. If you were to have any amount of real estate, any amount of money in the bank, 
anything along those lines. The government is able to seize those assets. This is the one immutable, unseizable asset that they cannot get their hands on. If they do not have the keys, they do not have the power. So you are taking the power away from the government and saying, fuck off, this is my shit, you can't touch it. It's a different... It's a different feeling when you go, well, it's a security commodity, this, that, the other, because they're going to either ban securities, let them go through, ban this one because it's bad, yada, yada. Right now, if they say XRP is banned and it's done, no one's allowed to, everyone, like everyone that had money in XRP, it's fucked. Like it's fucked. It's gone. It's going down. It's not coming back. No one's going to buy it. By saying, hey, I'm going to take my XRP, leave it in an offline wallet, you can transact on a decentralized exchange. You're fine. You can't touch any of the centralized exchanges. And there is a point to it. Or U.S.-based exchanges, I would say. Yes, and that's the other. But you also have to deal with the geo geo wall. Yeah, and then hold on real quick. Lissa, your hand's up. Oh, yeah. I was just going to tell you guys, I love this conversation, but it's getting late and I have to be up in five hours. So I love you. I'm going to try to listen, but uh, I love you guys. Lissa, thank you to you and Xander for joining tonight. Real quick before you go, I have a quick question. I have two questions for you. Uh, were you listening last night? Um, I listened a little bit last night. Was it what was I on mute the entire time? Because when I went to try to end this or start end the space, my mute was on, and I was like, Oh my god, I think I just had like an hour long interview with people, and my microphone was muted the entire time. So, your space last night only went for like 19 minutes and then it shut down. Oh, okay, yay! Thanks, Twitter. All right, final question, Lissa Hot Seat 10 seconds, final words. Get your shit off of exchanges. All right. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for contributing and, 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 and bringing us to a net positive. Uh, have a wonderful night. Best to you and Xander, and we will see you guys on the flip side. Yes, for sure. Night, guys. All right. Sorry to cut you off, Phil, there. Saw the hand up. Had to address that real quick. And, uh, yeah. And uh, we do have... I don't know why she hasn't uh, asked to speak, but I, I did send her a, up, Saba? another request to come and talk. But the question you had of explaining to your grandma, I think she could answer that too. Can I throw a thought at this one as well? And I get it. Go. Of course. This is, a great, this is an interesting one. So... I mean, half the problem I have, and I'm sure we we all feel the same way, is, you know, the barriers to entry, right? Especially when we look at, you know, hardware wallets and things like that. It's still a massive challenge for the no-coiners. Um, and I'm seeing a huge development now in, uh, you know, these, what would we call them? Web-based wallets, right? I'm not a fan. I don't recommend it to anyone, but I think... Now that this, you know, it's kind of, I'd almost say it's a new iteration of onboarding. Um, And, you know, I think being able to onboard people, you know, via, this is going to sound crazy, right? You almost got to cover your ears for this. Um, But they're now leveraging your social logins. So, you know, your Google ID, your Apple ID, your Facebook login. And you can create multi-chain wallets in 15 seconds, right? Uh, We don't probably necessarily agree with that, but I think, you know, these kind of iterations, if you like, are going to be huge for crypto adoption because we do need that, right? Um, I think it's something we've been missing for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. No, mass adoption, um, and and I think where we'll get mass adoption clo- the fastest, um, as much as we hate to as much as I hate to say this, well, there's two parts: infrastructure base. You know, when companies start using blockchain for their infrastructure systems, their database systems, um, you know, look at what like J.P. Morgan is doing with uh, Onyx Chain, 
and uh, what they're trying to prove out. Like, I'm friends with Do you know one who of the... created Kadena. No. Don't say the guys that created JP Morgan coin, the guys that were in charge of JP Morgan. Oh, you, 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 told, you told me this. Yeah, you told me this before. Um, but so that JP Morgan coin uh, is separate from the Onyx chain, though. Onyx chain is still private net, I guess you would say. Um, but what those devs, like my, what my dev friend has told me is like, he's like, where they're looking at the, they're looking at the future to where, you know, nine, seven out of 10, nine out of 10 ideas, you know, they flesh them out enough and then they, they scrap, scrape them because they think of future regulation on it. And so, but where I think this is really as, as horrible as this going to sound, what's going to get at least America on on blockchain the fastest are cbdc's um and because the way it's going to happen is the government's going to say hey download this app kyc and you're going to have eight hundred dollars waiting for you tucker do you believe that narrative like i read a nice article I... by uh, the boston fed and mit uh, the Hamilton Report, I believe it's called. And they stood up uh, distributed ledger. I don't know what tech it was built on versus, you know, traditional systems in the world. It's a very interesting article where they compare, you know, as I said, you know, blockchain tech versus what they've got in the real world. Um, and I believe that report has been sent out to a lot of kind of government body, bodies for reviews and whatnot. Um, and that report's basically saying, you know, it, it's breaking this myth that the, the central bank digital currencies are actually going to be operating on a blockchain. I don't know. It's just an interesting read, right? Um, why do they, in all honesty, it would, would depend on the blockchain, right? But in all honesty, why do they need to use the blockchain? Is it that we want them to? Um what are your thoughts? They're on not. They use Fed now. Yeah. They they have a system in America. It's called Fed now. Um, it's on privatized servers. They they. I don't foresee it taking place really in first world countries just yet. And if they do, they're going to put Social Security, welfare, and any form of government assistance through the CBDCs. They're going to try to be able to then see where the money's going. The biggest issue in America is the cash and where the cash goes. Um, right here, right now, uh, we have a thing called EBT, and in some states it's STAR, it's whatever. It's just a form of if you are below the poverty line, you get money from the government to buy food. And right here, right now, one of the side hustles that a lot of people do is they'll sell their food stamps for 75, 50 cents on the dollar. So if the food stamp's worth a dollar, they'll sell for 50 so they can go buy beer or cigarettes or whatever because the food stamps are only good for the food. It's just a way for them to track where the money is going. Um, it's immutable ledger. They can see it. They can recall transactions. It's also a form of control where if you don't meet their narrative, they can just fucking annex you and close down your accounts, hold your money. It's nothing more than a control factor with CBDCs. And one thing I'd like to mention is when CBDCs become mainstream, that is when privacy coins will fucking moon. Every privacy coin, Pirate Chain, Monero, Zcash, Grin, Firo, Ergo, they will fucking go ballistic because of this. Yeah, it's an interesting thought. I just look. If you haven't read it, it's a bit of a document, maybe 60 pages. It's really eye-opening, very interesting. I, I, I had scanned it before. I actually have it on, as a tab now to, to remind me to read it again later. Um, one of the things I do remember, uh, the, the TLDR of it, was there was like 13 mainstream banks that, partake, that partook in the testing of it. You know, so it was, it was sort of a, I don't remember off the top of my head, so I don't want to put anyone out there on, on, on the block that wasn't out there just because they're a big bank name. Um, but it was interesting to see who partook in the study of it. One of the things where I do see banks coming to uh, blockchain 
is for the simple piece of the financial side of it of instant payout or uh, instantaneous transactions and 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 you know yes right you know uh, instantaneous settlement and so near instantaneous and so right now that settlement can take days or a week you know most of it you know yes the ones and zeros transfer in you know seconds but at the same time you know he said she said he said she said operator takes a moment and so uh, that finalization piece is what because I think if the financial markets can move faster, uh, the banks w- would always move to that because that allows them to do things. And then, you know, uh, so many different pieces will come into play. Uh, ESGs and other financial institutional tools of bonds and, and crazy things like that will come out. Because that's like what JP Morgan is, is working to do is tokenize uh, you know, stocks and, and assets on that piece for, for loans, um, but liquid positions. And so it's really interesting to see where that will go. But I do believe that what will get pe- the most that will get Coinbase shut down the internet when they put their QR code up uh, during uh, the Super Bowl. Uh, some alpha, if you're watching this, uh, make sure you're watching the, the, the Super Bowl because there will be a commercial be going on that is going to be for like the first 500,000 people that scan um, for an NFT that's coming up. And so I thought they banned all cryptocurrency related uh, commercials. Uh, that it, just be ready for this. Hey, Taco and, and Phil, maybe one for you as well. Uh, do you kind of maybe top four big banks there in your country? Do they offer customers crypto uh, at all? Customers, uh, what do you mean? Well, in, in what way do you ask? Your commercial banking customers, your mom's yeah, and yeah, Fidel. They they offer um, the asset pieces of it to ownership, sort of like like Fidelity does that. Okay. Um, Derivative base, you don't actually own the asset. So he's interesting. Our banks have just come out. Uh, So last, prior to probably, no, it was mid mid COVID. I think the bank said, you know, we're in the in the progress of offering uh, crypto services. You know, basically trading um, and full custodianship to consumers for crypto. Um, And this year, they've just two of our four banks have now released uh, uh, stable coins, um, which is kind of interesting. So I don't know if you guys are kind of seeing that happening over there. So I think it's probably their first step uh, to, yeah, adoption of some, of some kind or so that, something. No bank will do that at this point just for the simple fact that there is actually no clear regulation around it. That is why I'm looking forward to regulation for the simple fact that once regulation is outlined, uh, it will give everyone the sandbox to play in and to build in. So, you know, no one wants to build because they don't know if it will be outside the sandbox. Well, Taco, our number one bank has come out and said they will be offering crypto to consumers this year. Whether it happens or not, I don't know. Well, look at what, like last year, um, I'm going to probably say some words wrong here, so I apologize, but, uh, uh, you know, UK Parliament um, and Boris, when he was in charge, was saying basically crypto was a scam and, you know, demonized in every way. But then at at the same time, um, uh, the equivalent of the Treasury of of the United Kingdom was saying, hey, we're going to issue a digital coin um, and, and we're going to on blockchain. And so they really couldn't stop that where like they can do that here. Um, but um, I think once regulation comes out and people know what they can do because people don't mind putting money, you know, into investments that are overseas um, or based elsewhere uh, in the investment arms or co-ops um, that then, sort of protect them from any liability because they don't they don't know what that money is being invested in they just know they're having returns um and i said that with 
air quotation marks. Um, so that's one of their protections right now. Um, but there's so many huge venture firms that have that, that piece and so many family offices. Um, I was at an event uh, two, three weeks ago. It was right before, I don't I think it was right before. Yeah, it was uh, after I got back from Miami, uh, from Quantum Miami, uh, went to uh, Blue Dow. Um, and Blue Dow uh, was host, they were host. We went to the MasterCard uh, that was in the MasterCard building. And, and it was sort of hilarious, me having to deal with security and them one saying, um, she didn't believe me. My name was player one taco dot ETH. And I was like, J just look. And she was like, you need to show an ID that like, uh, I'm not on the list. And I'm like, I'm not, you're not going to find Steve Smith on the list. Um, and she looked for Steve Smith, couldn't find Steve Smith. And I was like, look for dot ETH or player one taco. And she's like, Oh my God, there is. And she's like, how can you prove that's you? And I'm like, uh, an NFT. And she's like, uh, show me that you own it. And so like I, I did a little proth of ownership that, that I owned player one taco dot ETH. And, and she's like, I guess that's works. And that sort of threw her off, but companies are moving forward. Um, you know, how MasterCard has partnered up with a DAO, you know, so it is coming. People are waiting for this stuff. Um, but it, it's, everyone's chomping at the bit, getting ready to build, but until regulation comes out defining it, um, it, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see those workarounds. Um, you know, uh, TJ, any closing words on that? No, Tucker. No, I'll leave it at that, mate. Thank you. All right. Phil, any closing words on that? Proof of stakes, a scam, proof of work, the way. Okay. TJ, 10 seconds, closing words of wisdom. Uh, gosh, you put me on the spot. Can I go second? <laughs> uh, oh, guys, just be, time is just be safe and gentle with each other. There you go. All right. Yeah. Phil, 10 seconds, final thoughts, words of wisdom. It's so funny that Satoshi forgot to put yield in Bitcoin. <laughs> All right. Uh, and as always, I'm going to closing statement that was actually made by someone else uh, the other day, which was sort of funny. And I want to just and then I'm, I'll sit, we'll close with my final words. Uh, I was meeting with an Arbitrum researcher uh, who's part of the Arbitrum Foundation. And he was like, not my keys. Not my crypt, not my problem. And, and he's waiting for distributed key technology to really step forward. Um, he really wants that to become the highlight of the next wave of security. Um, and once that's solved, he thinks that that will actually produce more mass adoption. Because um, right now we are telling everyone, go write 12 words on a piece of paper, 24 words on a piece of paper and hide it. Um, but as always, I end with my words of wisdom. Uh, you know, a closed mouth cannot be fed and you cannot feed a closed mouth. And I want to thank everyone for joining tonight. Uh, you know, we are doing really good. You know, greed index is at 55 right now. Social mar uh, marketing uh, put sentiment was towards the t coin U UTK and Ajax. Um, ben Gorowitz AI coin uh, is top, top six search on, on searches today on Google. So, Crypto's out there for the masses and everyone. And I want to thank you all. Phil, will you help me with the best knock-knock joke ever? Knock-knock. Who dare? <laughs>